Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the basics of SketchUp. Today, I want to take a look at the scale command. Let's hop right in. So the scale command is a modify command, so it lets you take existing geometry and manipulate it. So we're going to take a look at, I have some geometry that's grouped together right here, and we're going to go in and see how to use scale to change this geometry. Uh, scale can be activated a couple different ways. It is in the main toolbar. It's right here. It's this little uh, brown square with a red arrow going up at an angle. Uh, it's also in the large tool set. So if I go to view tool palettes on Mac, toolbars on window, and turn on the large tool set, I'll see that it's right here in this middle block, uh, bottom left scale. You can also see when that pops up, S, the letter S on the keyboard, is the shortcut key for scale. You can see that where I pop that up and I'm um, in scale. So scale works very similarly to uh, other modification commands. That is, if I select something first and then I click on scale, boom, I'm in the scale command. If I don't have something selected, if I just choose scale, now it's going to prop up and ask me select an entity to scale, so then I can pick that one thing. So obviously that's something you want to keep in mind if you're selecting a bunch of loose geometry, you want to select it first before you click on the command. So when I pick up something, regardless of what it is, if it's a single grouped item like this, if it's a bunch of selected geometry, it's going to pop up and give me this look, this view. This So, so I have my, my box around the whole thing, and then at the top, I have nine handles, bottom nine handles, and the middle another nine handles. The way these handles work is when you hover over and grab one of these handles, the opposite handle is highlighted as well. And if I click and drag that handle up or down, it's going to scale my geometry between those two points. So if I grab the top, it's going to stretch it. See how it stretches it out vertically? Everything's being stretched together horizontally. Any of these middle ones are going to stretch along that axis. See that real easy, simple. You know what you're going to get there. If I grab one of these other pieces, I'm going to have the ability to... So, so, here, so this handle specifically, let's look at these ones that go diagonally across. Not, not fully across the full but the, the middle handles, if I grab those, I actually have the ability to manipulate in different directions. Look at that. See how I'm stretching it along that? So I'm actually stretching the geometry in two axes. This is getting stretched along the red and the blue, uh, as opposed to like, uh, let's grab this one right here. No, it's going to give me the same thing. It's just opposite. Here we go. This one. This one's going to stretch across the green and the blue. See how that works? If I grab a corner, any of these eight corner points, and drag, it's going to scale all axes, so it's uniformly scaling it larger or smaller. As I'm dragging this, you want to keep an eye on this, this value in the lower right corner, because as I drag this bigger and smaller, you can see it actually tells me the scale that I'm moving that. If I want to go to a specific scale value. So say I have this and I want it to be half the size. I could start dragging this way and then release my mouse and just type in 0.5. Again, I don't have to click down in that lower right corner. I just type it and then hit enter. And now this is exactly half the size of it was before I started that scale process. So as usual, let's get it back to two, two times that size. You can see as I'm dragging, it is it does have these little snap points. See how it jumped right there? Boom, jump to one even. It's going to do the same thing at two. Boom, two. So I can use that snapping to rescale also. All right, so there are modifier keys. If I look down at the bottom, I have the use, option of using Option or Shift. On Windows, this option will be replaced by Control. That is a real nice one because... If I want to do something like, say I want to flip this the other direction, I'm going to leave it right where it is, but flip it the other way. If I hold down the Option key on Mac, this is Control on Windows, and I click and drag, it's going to scale about the middle. And when I get to negative 1 and release, I've just reflected that, basically. Same thing here vertically. Let's grab this one, hold down Option on Mac, Control on Windows, 
drag it down until it snaps at negative one, and I've just mirrored it vertically. All right, so we looked at using like these controls to, to and rescale along multiple axes. So that can get a little unruly, a little bit weird, but if I hold down shift, regardless of what axes I, I drag across, it's going to allow me, it's going to keep the model uniform as I scale. So I'm holding down shift right now as I drag, everything stays uniform regardless of which handle I grab onto. So really cool, really easy. There's actually a lot specifically you can do with that too. Let's say for uh, just for fun, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold down option again and flip this back vertically. Not that this specific shape has an up and a down, but uh, I'm going to do that just to practice. And let's say I want to make this an exact height. So I want this to be exactly six feet tall. If I click right here and start dragging up, or I showed you before, as I'm dragging, I can release and then type a value in here. Before we put in just a scale value, 0.5, but if I want it to be a specific height, I could type six foot and then hit enter. What that will do then is scale so that that axis I, I was just dragging here to here is exactly six feet. Now, it did deform that. It stretched it vertically to six feet. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. And I'm gonna, let's go up even a little bit bigger. Let's go 10 feet. So if I just go like this way and I type 10 foot, enter, you can see how very much, see how very much stretched out that is. I'm gonna undo that again. So if I hold down the shift key and start dragging vertically, now I'm dragging resizing uniformly. And if I release and type in 10 foot right now and hit enter, it's going to resize it so that it vertically is 10 feet. But because I had shift held down at the beginning, it uniformly resized that whole thing. So this has been dragging, uh, scaling an entire group. Over here, I have some loose geometry. I could do the same thing where I could grab all of this loose geometry, then hit scale, and I will now be scaling all of that geometry together. But check this out. One of the things I can do is I can grab just a portion of the geometry and scale that. Everything applies that I just said before. So if I hold down shift, it's going to uniformly rescale that piece of geometry. If I hold down, let's go grab something weird. Let's make a mess real quick. This is the fun thing about SketchUp. You're only an undo away from fixing whatever problems you make. So if I was to grab, let's grab just this end face right here. And if I hit scale, I'm gonna hold down option so I'm gonna scale around the middle. And watch this, watch what I can do now. I can scale that piece all the way down to almost nothing. And I can actually use scale as a deformation tool that lets me change geometry, not just make things bigger and smaller. That of course takes a little bit of practice, but you already know all the pieces that you need to know in order to use scale to use it as a deformation tool or to simply make things bigger and smaller. That's everything I could think to use scale. Obviously, like I said, you can take those exact commands and you can get in and start making some crazy deformations to pieces. You can grab lines that are edges and scale those. Um, lots of cool options of scale. Scale is one of those underappreciated things. People think, oh, you just use scale to make things bigger and smaller. But if you really get in there and learn the tool, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with scale. Hopefully you like that. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here and you'll be notified of each and every one if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. What tool would you like to see next? We do create just about every one of our videos based on feedback from users like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.